Hi again, guys. Okay, where is it? Yes, I'm sure you guessed. It's the Mediterranean Sea, and here's Italy here. But the reason I'm showing you this picture is I want you to look at this thin blue line here. This thin blue line, that's our atmosphere. Sometimes we imagine that the, the atmosphere goes up forever, and that it's, the atmosphere is huge. But if we actually look at this thin blue line here, it, it gives us a much Id better idea of you know, the atmosphere we live in and how thin and small it is. Yeah, so what I want you to imagine is you know, all the cars and the lorries driving around pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and all the power stations, the coal-fired power stations, oil-fired power stations pumping carbon into the atmosphere. And you know it's it's going to have an effect on our atmosphere because you know that's how thin our atmosphere is. Okay, the main reason for this lesson is I want to explain a little bit about uh, radiative forcing. So we know that the world is warming up gradually, but even before mankind started having an effect on the Earth's temperature, the climate used to change too. So whether temperature change is man-made or not, the temperature change is caused by a radiative forcing. As you now know, a radiative forcing is measured in watts per square meter. Now the radiative forcing due to global warming or due to the increase in greenhouse gases in our atmosphere is about you know one and a half watts per square meter to maybe two you know watts per square meter. So how much is one and a half or two watts? Well, Christmas tree lights. Next, you know, next Christmas, have a look at your Christmas tree lights. Christmas tree lights are probably one and a half watts or two watts each. So that's the sort of extra energy which is entering planet Earth, but every square meter. Yes, one meter by one meter. Yes, and planet Earth is receiving. A forcing yes of you know one and a half to two watts per meter squared so it may not sound a lot but when you think how many square meters there are over the whole of planet earth uh, you can imagine that's uh, you know, rather a lot of energy entering planet earth and heating it up due to the increase in greenhouse gases due to gases like uh, carbon dioxide and methane, tropospheric ozone, nitrous oxide, HFCs, etc. But this lesson we're just going to be concentrating on carbon dioxide. Now due to the change in land use and also burning of fossil fuels, mankind is increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And um, there's a, a scientist named Keeling, and he's been making measurements of the, the atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, since 1958. And we can see here uh, that the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing. On the left of the graph, it's uh, parts per million. And on the bottom of the graph, we get the dates, uh, and it's January of each year. And we can see that you know each year there is an um, increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Roughly, uh, the carbon dioxide content is increasing two parts per million every year. Now, this graph only goes up to 1995. Let's see if we can find a more recent graph. So this is a more recent graph. Oh, it goes up to. You know, 2011 from 2005. Um, notice that 
the graph isn't so spiky and that's because as it says at the top here it's being corrected for average seasonal cycle so let's have a look at and see what this average seasonal cycle is this graph here uh, shows the amount of carbon dioxide year on year increasing in the atmosphere between 1998 and 2009 on the left here we have the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and on the top here we have the latitude. Now notice in the northern hemisphere uh, there is a, a lot more fluctuation in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and that's because in the summertime well in the northern hemisphere there are more plants and in the summertime plants grow more leaves and because plants grow more leaves um, they take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to grow their leaves whereas in the winter time we, we can see that the amount of carbon dioxide goes up each winter time and this is because trees and plants generally lose their leaves in the winter time and uh, these leaves fall on the ground and they decay and when they decay they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But on top of that, yes, we can see that CO2 levels you know, are generally rising and this increase in CO2 is because you know, man burns fossil fuels but also you know, you know, land use as well, for example cutting down of rainforests etc. So we know the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing but what change in radio to forcing does this increase in carbon dioxide have? To find out we've come back to this model again and we're going to change the amount of carbon dioxide which is in the atmosphere. Now at present the model has no carbon dioxide and we can see on the graph here that no carbon dioxide is showing up on the graph. So we're going to enter two different figures into the carbon dioxide input. First figure we're going to enter is 280 parts per million. Now 280 parts per million, this was the amount of carbon dioxide which was in the atmosphere before the Industrial Revolution. So before we started pumping huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere uh, due to our you know, industrial uh, use. So um, 280 parts per million, let's see what that looks like. So yes, we can see that 280 parts per million is showing up on the graph, but this is the figure I want you to remember. This is the radio to f f forcing. Yeah? This is a satellite looking down on planet Earth, so this is the amount of radiation escaping in, into space. Yeah? So if we look at the amount of radiation escaping into space, remember this figure, 289.1. So let's compare that with how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere today. And the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today 2011 is 390 parts per million. So let's enter that in. So even though you can't see very much of a difference in the shape of the graph, but if you look at the change in radiative forcing, we now have 287.7. So that's a difference of 1.5 watts. So uh, we know that there's been a change in radiative forcing uh, of about uh, 1.5 volts, watts, uh, and this this 1.5 watts is um, you know uh, what is heating planet Earth. This is what is actually causing uh, the global warming. Well, at least part of it anyway, and uh, I'll explain that a little bit more later. So this table here, yeah, if you look at the top here, it shows that anthropogenic uh, radiator forcing of one and a half, just, just over one and, one and a half watts per meter squared. 
Uh, when I say anthropogenic, there's the word anthropogenic, uh, what that means is it's, it's man-made. So we're talking about man-made CO2 here, not natural CO2. Now, as I said before, there are many things which can cause radiative forcing, and this graph really shows the, the different radiative forcings which are affecting planet Earth. And we get the anthropogenic radiative radiative forcings, uh, which are the man-made radiative forcings, and we get the natural radiative forcings. So we just had a look at carbon dioxide there. At the bottom here it shows the radiative forcing. It can be negative or positive. Yeah, if it's positive it means it's heating planet Earth. If it's negative it means it's cooling planet Earth. So we know that CO2 gives you know, just over one and a half watts per square meter. Let's look at a few others as well. The other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, methane, nitrous oxide, HFCs, halocarbons, if when we add them all together they give an additional one watt per uh, square meter of radiative forcing. Ozone, uh, the ozone in the troposphere also uh, heats planet Earth a little bit yeah, nearly, well, maybe about 0.3 or 0.4 watts per square meter. Right? But the ozone in the stratosphere actually um, cools planet Earth a little bit, and I'll explain that in another video. Here we have a stratospheric water from carbon dioxide. I'll explain that later. Surface albedo, how reflective the land is. You know, snow, for example, reflects carbon dioxide, but black carbon on snow, yes, that will increase the radiative forcing uh, and heat the planet a little bit. I'll explain that later as well. Now, aerosols. Aerosols are things which are put into the atmosphere by pollution, really. Little sulfur particles or polluting particles. And very often these polluting particles, they reflect the sunlight uh, and because they reflect the sunlight, they actually have a cooling effect. And then over the, the last few years, there has been an increase in the amount of solar irradiance, so the sun has got uh, slightly hotter. Uh, and we've shown that here. But when you add it all up, yes, the negatives and the positives, uh, we can see that there's a, a total net anthropogenic change of just over one and a half uh, watts per meter squared. And that one and a half watts per meter squared, if you were you know, to multiply that by the total area of the Earth, that would be a lot of extra energy coming into planet Earth, and um, that's what's causing uh, planet Earth to warm up. Next lesson, I hope, uh, to look at how we know that this carbon dioxide here is actually anthropogenic, yeah, that, that it is actually created by uh, man. Okay, finally I just want to leave you with this short clip which shows uh, sources of um, CO2 or greenhouse gas emissions uh, over the United States. See you next video.